What is trying to get out of What's the trying to get Don't wait for validation. Yeah, don't wait for validation. Yeah, what's that mean to you? Don't wait. What's validation mean? Uh, okay. Somebody else approved. Yeah. Okay, you got to grab and go get it. Um, I heard somebody say something over here. Say it again. Go ahead. Don't wait to be important. Like, don't wait for somebody to recognize you. Yeah, well, well, and I would say you are important. I mean, you are. I'm just saying, say you are. So don't. Don't wait to a point where you feel like somebody else needs to tell you you're important. That's the part that you don't want to wait for. Because I talk about this here with don't wait for validation in this chapter. If I would have waited to start speaking for a living at least until people thought I was good enough to speak for a living, I'd still be sitting at home somewhere. And what I talk about and your life is not a garbage can is being conscious of what you allow into your life. How many of you have ever been on a phone call with somebody? They tell you about an incident. The incident had nothing to do with you. But by the time you get off the phone, they were so heated, you mad too. How mm -hmm. many of y'all been in a situation? It's an hour later, you still mad, thinking about the situation. It had nothing to do with you, just because of the phone call. Now imagine you keep doing that every day. What that does to you. And that's what we talk about, your life is not a garbage can. You know, we. Some of us are, are the type of friend that, you know, other friends come to to lean on. How many of y'all like that? Your friends come and lean on. And, that, and that's a good thing. But it can be bad when that's all that's happening. You can't always be the one that's picking up the phone, and every time you answer the phone, it's something negative. I'll give y'all an instance. I actually stopped having serious phone conversations with people before I got up to speak. It was something I just had to learn to do. Now I get a phone call, if it's an hour or so before I'm ready to speak, I'll just wait and say I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it later. Because I've been in situations where the person means nice, they're calling you, maybe for advice, and by the time they've told you about all this, I'm getting up to speak and my, my mind ain't even right. Because I'm, I'm so concerned and focused on what happened there. Remember we talked before about focus. And that's how life is. You don't have three focuses, you only have one. And it's either you're focused on the right thing or you're focused on the wrong thing. So what I talk about in this chapter is how to nicely tell friends. Because I know it's easier said than done. But how to nicely tell friends, look, you know, I can't always be that one. But my first job was McDonald's. That was my very first job. And I talk about that in this book. Right down the street from the trailer park. I had to get, like my boss said, just be good with the fries. Well, I mean, you do nothing else. You just get good with that. And what I learned from that job, in particular, is that your life, you know, people have this thought, and for those of you that are over 18, you know it, but some people seem to think at 18, like everything just falls into place. Like, you know, you can just be doing whatever throughout your life, and at 18, that's the magic moment, you move out, and you go on. How many of y'all know people that's way past 18, still laid up with mama? <laughs> yeah, okay. And I mean, look, I'm not making a judgment call. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's a lot of folks like that. The point is, this is the point, and this is what we talk about in the plan for your future. Lessons like punctuality, like responsibility, accountability, these things don't just happen when you turn a certain age. It happens because of habits that you develop. You know, I, I'll tell you. I did not want to get the job when I got it. <laughs> Trust me, I did. It was my mother. I can thank her now. I wasn't thanking her then. It was my mother here who made me get that job. I remember I was 15 years old, and my mom came in the room. She said, boy, you are too old to be doing nothing over the summer. Now I'm thinking, I'm a good student. Like, shouldn't the summer be like my time to chill? And, and my mother's like, uh-uh, not up in here. And you said that's how you know. Yeah, and I was upset. I mean, I had a, I had an attitude, like you know, to myself, but I had an attitude. Of, and I'm sitting here like, why can't I just do what everybody else? So that's what I felt like. The other kids are just chilling. I wanted to chill too. And what? And this is what I talk about in this book too. With plan for your future. If you're doing what everybody else is doing, you're gonna get what everybody else is getting. And now that I'm doing my own thing, and doing something that people. I sit and say, I wish I was doing what you're doing. I can say I'm glad that my mother was putting me on my own path.